Oh, it's not like it used to be. You know? <laughs> If you want to understand what happened in New Zealand history, you have to know about the baby boom. It was literally a boom of babies being born after World War II was done and dusted. Wealthiest generation in history, the best educated, the most stable, they had the most economic opportunities of any generation this planet ever saw. Best music too, they had it all. Their parents' generation, fought and died in a bloody war to hand them their world. And how did they live in it? Shallow, petty, greedy, spoiled, entitled. They burned the world down, spent up what their fathers had given them, and then went on to spend against the wealth of the unborn children and grandchildren. They grew the welfare state, they dumped the country astronomically deeper into debt, they choked off the free market, demanding protected status for local industries while gobbling up every new luxury consumer item they could import. New transistor radio, portable TV, Polaroid instant camera, imported makeup, imported jewellery, electric toothbrushes and hair dryers and everything else. If it could be made more electric then they wanted it. Generation me consumed like mad buggers and threw out the wisdom and knowledge handed down to our people and they didn't hand it on to the next gen. In the 1960s and 70s, poverty was associated with the elderly. Families and children were supported. The boomers turned that basic equation on its head, roaring approval for a barnstorming Muldoon happy to be their drug dealer in exchange for power. These days, of course, the most important people are those boomers. They have all the wealth and their children do not. Children and families live in poverty in New Zealand, renting their houses and working as employees. Boomers own most of the property and won't let go of it with their gnarly old hands. The average age of real estate license holders and business owners is in the late 60s and 70s. They are boomers. How do they live with themselves? Who quells any embers of a conscience or a soul? these wrinkly greed zombies have about eating their own children and grandchildren. Nigel Latter? Yes, he's one. Winston Peters? Oh hell yes! He's the original protege of Muldoon who invented this political racket at Ground Zero in 1975. But right now let's take a look at a viral post that has been doing the rounds on social media as well as in the state newspapers. And this is why your kids should not be the most important people in your family by John Rosemond. <clears throat> I recently asked a married couple who have three kids, none of whom are yet teens, who are the most important members in your family? Like all good moms and dads of this brave new millennium, they answered, our kids. Why? I asked them. What is it about your kids that gives them that status? And like all good moms and dads of this brave new millennium, they couldn't answer the question other than to fumble with appeals to emotion. So we're straight into it. Should generative energy, nature intended for your children, be put into the future of the human race? Or should parents hold on to it for their own pleasure and enjoyment? Uh, he's going to tell you it's the latter. And he's already character assassinating people who've have presumably come to him for help so it's some sort of informal survey of parents who have come to this guy who's some kind of intellectual family help guy and he's calling them fumbling and emotional so i answered the question for them there is no reasonable thing that gives your children that status here's a reasonable thing children are helpless increasingly so the younger they are they are dependent sometimes we call them dependents referring to children they need their parents. Parents are responsible for the children. That's why children are the most important. They are the priority. They are why people form a peer bond so that they can have children. They work together and create excess resources to funnel them into children. That's what it's for. Children need it. Humans need it. We've evolved that way. We're practically useless for 
up to a decade at a time while we learn the ropes. This is the neotenous nature of the human. We can't get up and gallop away in two minutes like other animals. So I hope that's reasonable. That's why the children are important. That's why they should have primacy. I went on to point out that many, if not most, of the problems they're having with their kids, typical stuff these days, are the result of treating their children as if they, their marriage, and the family exist because of the kids, when it is in fact the other way around. Ah, <laughs> so the arch sophist flips it around trying to muddle one Aristotelian cause for another. Biologically, the healthy child is causally downstream of a strong marriage and a stable family. Sure, this doesn't prove that parents are the morally superior unit that children exist to service. On the contrary, strong pair bonds and stable families exist for the sake of children. By this muddling, Rosamond is trying to say children and families and parenting and strong marriages are supposed to be bent towards feathering and pleasuring the adults. That is exactly the worm-tongued rubbish that boomers want to be told. Their kids exist because of them and their marriage and thrive because they have created a stable family. We're talking about a non-negotiable biological requirement of children that stable families and marriages exist to serve, not the other way around. Furthermore, without them, their kids wouldn't eat well, haven't the nice clothing they wear, live in the nice home in which they live, enjoy the great vacations they enjoy, and so on. Instead of lives that are relatively carefree, despite the drama to the contrary that they occasionally manufacture, their children would be living lives full of worry and want. This issue is really the heart of the matter. Why, yes, it is the heart of the matter. Without a stable family, without parents, without resources, if children were just born into nature and left to fend for themselves in the deserts and among the sticks and on the beaches and among the crocodiles, they would be doomed. The human does not subsist this way. A part of our evolution, part of our individuality is sort of shared intergenerationally. It's parenting, it's mammalian, it's what humans have perfected in the mammal world that we rear our young, we care for our young. We, we don't just breed and leave them on the beach to dig themselves up like turtles and try not to get eaten by a seagull. We look after them. That is the point. And of course, Rosamond is turning this completely on its head. People my age know it's the heart of the matter. Ah uh, yes, people your age have the sentiment, don't they? Which you are fleshing out intellectually with your sophist tricks. So you're appealing to people your age. You're explaining at length what they already know, what they feel in their bones, that all the resources belong to us, not the children. Note also, quote, despite the drama to the contrary that they occasionally manufacture, unquote, how disrespectful. He's saying that children manufacture their drama. It's not real. And it's just drama. They don't have any problems. They're just kids. What a horrible, hateful, minimizing, dehumanizing little bracketed statement he's smuggled in there. People my age no, it's the heart of the matter, because when we were kids it was clear to us that our parents were the most important people in our families. And that right there is why we respected our parents, and that right there is why we looked up to adults in general. So here we see that, of course, this boomer entitlement to all the marbles stems from their hurt souls. Their parents didn't give them the love and attention and attachment a healthy child needs. They were too busy being drafted and rationed and put into work gangs and being killed at the front lines. Their housewives displaced into the factories, fathers coming back maimed and disciplined to military hierarchy, often missing arms or parts of their face, or even not coming home at all. They were a traumatized generation without control of their lives, caught up in unnecessary wars. You've been hurt, John. They didn't meet your attachment needs because of the depression and the war. Now though, don't compound the tragedy by inflicting the same upon the next generation. Yes, 
Virginia, once upon a time in the United States of America, children were the second-class citizens to their advantage. And there it is. If your parenting style relies on the fact that you treat others as beneath you, then you should be left questioning the moral ambiguity that you're instilling in your children. Second-class citizens to their advantage. It was also clear to us, I speak of course in general terms, albeit accurate, that our parents' marriages were more important to them than their relationships with us. I am actually starting to feel sorry for the guy now. He didn't get that attachment. He didn't get enough mommy and daddy time when he was growing up. That's what he's saying. Therefore, we did not sleep in their beds or interpret their conversations. The family meal at home was regarded as more important than after-school ac after activities. Ah, oh, you poor fella. But not to excuse it, I know, but you know, these guys were fighting a goddamn war. That's not an excuse, but what's your excuse? Why would you do that to your children? You've got the time, you've got the money. Why can't you co-sleep with your children? Why can't you ha give them after-school activities and participate and take an interest in their lives and form that attachment? Nobody's trying to make you do a job you're not fitted for or put you in the army or get you to go to the Western Front or some goddamn thing. Oh, John. Mom and Dad talked more, a lot more, with one another than they talked with you. For a lack of pedestals, pedestals, we emancipated earlier and much more successfully than have children since. If you want to teach your children to be independent and self-sufficient, that's one thing. But to actively ignore and disrespect them is an entirely different affair. You really want to encourage independence by giving them nothing, no support, by not teaching them, by not spending time, by not attaching, by not passing on your information. You really think that's the great methodology to do what you think your parents did? To neglect the hell out of you until you become great? To throw you in the swimming pool? To figure out how to swim instead of swimming with them? and showing them and encouraging them and helping them to do things in a healthy way instead of a traumatized, desperate, flailing way? Oh, John. Oh, John! The most important person in any army is the general. The most important person in a corporation is the CEO. The most important person in a classroom is the teacher. And the most important person in a family are the parents. The most important people to an army are the people it protects. The most important people in a corporation are the shareholders. The most important persons in a classroom are the students. And the most important people in a family are the children. Popular psychology suggests, without me getting too sophisticated, from what he just said, that John's dad was an army general and a chief executive officer and that his mother was a school teacher and that John himself was barely on their radar. I wonder. The most important thing about children is the need to prepare them properly for a responsible citizenship. Ah, the baby boomer mantra. Ask not what your country can do for you but what you can do for your country. Your country is what's important. Responsible citizenship is what's important. It's not for you. Uh, citizenship is not to serve the people. No, no, no. People are there to serve the state, to serve citizenship. So the most important thing is to make sure that your children are prepared properly for responsible citizenship. You are such a JFK fanboy. The primary objective should not be raising a straight A student who excels at three sports, earns a spot on the Olympic swim team, goes to an A-list university, and becomes a prominent brain surgeon. Ha! <laughs>
And here we have more of the typical John Rosamond disdain and hatred and belittling of what a child would do if they were free to their own devices. What would they do if we encouraged their passions and didn't force them and condition them and neglect them into being good little servants of the state collective? What are they going to do? Oh, what, they're just going to go play on the Olympics and get straight A's and... <laughs> What are they going to do? They, they're just going to waste their time and fritter it away going to university and, what, brain surgery? <laughs> what a waste of time. Of course, it's not for... It's just so disrespectful to belittle what a free person would do if they had a strong parental bond. So he's mocking them. He's saying, ah, what are they going to do if, if they had a proper upbringing? They're just going to piss it away being rich kids getting straight A students and going skiing at the Olympics. Nah. The primary objective is to raise a child so that such, such that community and culture are strengthened. Community and culture are strengthened by people having strong peer bonds, by people having strong bonds to each other, learning to attach to their parents and then having strong friendships and cultural life the way it used to be, is not achieved by neglecting each other and teaching each other to not form attachments, to not have healthy attachments intergenerationally. You say community and culture, you mean collectivism. Our child is the most important person in our family. That's <laughs> the most, the first step toward raising a child who feels entitled. You don't want that. Unbeknownst to your child, he doesn't need that. And neither does America. I see a vision of wrinkly, skeletal, zombie baby boomers reaching into the futures and the brains of the unborn generations as well as their children's, raising up John Rosamond on their shoulders, up high, cheering for him, and trampling over the bodies of everyone who's not a baby boomer. Thank you, John. Thank you. You have given us our moral excuses. The end.